What is going on guys, welcome back to the free trading game collection. The series playlist is linked in the description and without any further ado, let's get into the first action of today's video. I have a lot to get through here today and I have an insane deal to show you as well as a CEX pickup and some car boot sale pickups. The first of which is going to be a car boot sale pickup, but I don't have the footage for it, unfortunately. So I'm walking around the boot sale. They let cars in very early in this one. We're talking like eight o'clock, half eight, which I know doesn't doesn't sound early but for this boot sale it is and you'll understand why in a second but you have to pay 25 pound I think it is to get in that early and then around 11 quarter past 11 they let every other seller in who pay obviously less money so at this point it's around 12 quarter past 12 the boot sale has been open for a number of hours and then this van shows up just as I'm about to leave and normally I don't really pay too much attention to vans because they tend to be house clearance people they chuck everything on the floor and people swarm. Well, that's exactly what happened this time. However, there weren't anywhere nearer as many people to swarm as they normally are because a lot of people had gone home. So this guy threw some stuff on the floor. None of it was video game related. I went to walk away and then he brought out a box of random stuff. And in that box was a white box. And it turns out that white box was this. This is an Xbox One controller. I went to ask him how much and I thought, hang on a minute, it does feel weighty. There is something in it, definitely, but let me have a little look. So I opened it up and yeah, it's not this, unfortunately, but it is an Xbox One controller. This thing was not in very good condition. Both bumpers had been completely smashed a bit. I think there was a problem with the analog stick as well. And there was a really bad sticky mark all over the front of it. And of course, the battery cover was missing. Now, this was, in my opinion, classed as faulty. I've got no idea if this works. I know I'm going to need to replace some things on it. So I said, how much for this? Expecting him to say, oh, that brand new is 50 quid. So give me 48.99. But no, he didn't. He literally said oh, a couple of quid. Didn't seem like he wanted to be there, just wanted to get rid of everything that he had from this clearance and wanted to go on to the next job. I think the box might actually be worth more than £2. I haven't looked into how much I could sell it for. For now, I'm going to keep it anyway. I'll put it on display. The controller inside, like I said, if I have footage of it, hopefully I have, it was completely smashed to bits. So I ordered a £3 pack of replacement buttons and triggers and things for an Xbox One controller. I changed both of the sticks. I changed the bumpers, of course, because I needed to and now the controller looks a little something like this it's not the best job in the world i won't lie to you but i'd never done this before i am a complete novice when it comes to opening things up and trying to repair them so for me to be able to open this replace the analog sticks replace the d-pad put brand new bumpers on which by the way are fully functional now uh, it doesn't have stick drift i've plugged it in to because we don't have an xbox of course i've plugged it in to the pc i've played a little bit of you've guessed it undisputed with it and yeah it doesn't have stick drift have tested it uh, properly as well with the software the only frustrating thing about this is i didn't have a replacement battery cover that matched the aesthetic so yeah it's just a white one i had this lying around in fact i've got another two or three of these so that is now a fully working xbox one controller it cost me two pound the button replacement uh, cost me um, three pound like I said so this whole thing was a fiver I already have a controller for the PC so I don't really need this and of course we don't have an Xbox at the moment however I am still going to keep it because you never know when you may need it for testing and because it was as cheap as it is I'm all right to keep it so my first mod of this series if you can call it that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna count it anyway uh let's go into cex right now because i have a little bit of a pickup so you remember from the wii spaghetti junction bundle that i picked up a couple of weeks ago there were some playstation 4 games in there of course one of which i decided to trade it was a lego marvel game and i think it traded for six pounds we already had a little bit left over from i think it was the Nacon controller I've mentioned that so many times and I really should have kept track of it but I think I have about nine quid left there which obviously isn't too bad that gave me a grand total of 15 pounds in credit um, I can't remember where there was a little bit more if there was I would have worked it out and put it on screen for you but I, I'm just going to go with 15 pound in credit now on this day in CEX I actually traded in a lot of stuff uh, I said I've got 15 pound in credit I actually was walking around CEX with around 120 pound in credit 
and I bought a lot of stuff. I didn't spend all the credit, but I did buy a lot of things. So the, the only reason I'm showing you just a small fraction of it is because I have other things to show you and otherwise we'd be here for about 40 minutes and I don't really like to do videos that long. But there was one game that I picked up immediately and it had been on my radar only for a couple of days to be fair because I'd never even heard of it before. It's a game that I've already finished, not because it was that good and that addictive, but because it is a particularly short game. But it's one that I don't even know if you can call it a game. It, it's a really, really strange experience. So like I said, I had £15. I think I add, had to add a fiver to it, kind of. I didn't, but I kind of did at the same time. I'll work out figures properly in a bit. The game in question... Perky Little Things. This thing is a weird one. Uh, it is probably one of the most disturbing games, if you can call it that, that I've ever seen. I don't know how this made it onto the Switch because, in my opinion, the Nintendo platform is always one of those where you don't really find too many gruesome things. There aren't many explicit things. It's all first party you know, really nice, fuzzy, warm feeling kind of games. This is anything but. This is a pornographic point and click game. I, that's Honestly, that is the best way I can put it. The footage that I've shown you or am showing you right now is probably all censored. And I say censored, that is a mode in this game. You can censor the game, which of course... You'd need, if you wanted to play it on stream or you wanted to make YouTube videos out of it, it kind of defeats the purpose of the entire game, but at the same time, you can do that. This was very short. It was £20, by the way. I'd never seen it before, and I looked it up, and I thought, wow, that is one of those that I feel like you, you, you don't need to own it, but I want to own it. Not because I'm perverted, although, uh, no, because I, I just want it on the shelf to say, look, this is the weirdest most un-Switch game you will ever see, and now I have it in the collection. I would not be surprised if that went on to be a very, very expensive game. It would not have had a big print run, let's be honest with each other. Uh, £20 at the moment, if that goes up to 30 40 in the next couple of months, it won't surprise me at all. So I do have another Switch game to show you. Unfortunately, this didn't come from CEX. It didn't come from a car boot sale. It came from Vinted. It was one of, if not the best Switch pickup I've had so far. And I say so far because I think I'm about to stump that in the next episode. Stay tuned for that. But this was around £9. I think I'll put the exact amount on screen. It was £9 and then bit of postage and fees on top, so it may have come to like 12 something, but still, £12 for this, CEX sell it for 38 it is a first party title, it is Super Mario Odyssey, can you believe someone sold this for 9 quid? I've mentioned it before and I'll say it again, Vinted is outrageous. I was sitting there and I was just refreshing on my filters where I've got Switch and certain prices and whatever, I was literally just refreshing it just sitting there watching TV, just refreshing it, until eventually this popped up. Now, this wasn't the only game that popped up during that session because I actually bought two in the same session, different sellers. Both of them first party, both of them incredible. The other one, in my opinion, is just a little bit more special. But this, for £12 all in, unreal. We've had this once before in the series, of course. Now, I didn't have a Switch at the time. It came randomly in a DS XL I think it was like a DSi XL wine bundle thing. I think they accidentally sent this to me, but uh, this time we're going to keep it. Have you managed to pick up a bargain online recently like I just did? Let me know in the comments if you've been on Vinted and found something insane or maybe eBay. I always see those auctions that end for like 99 pence plus postage and it's like a bundle of Mega Drive games or something. I never find them, but maybe you have. Let me know. These next two I want to show you very briefly, and I will have more to show you in the next episode, but I'm sure you've seen one of these on the shelf without any explanation whatsoever, and that is NBA Jam on the Mega Drive cart only, and we also have John Madden Football 92 cart only. Where have these come from, I hear you ask? Because this has been in the Mega Drive a lot over the last few months, and it's been on the shelf as well, and it's probably been in some B-roll. Um, this is actually from my personal collection from when I was a kid. 
Now, I don't know where the case, the artwork and the manual are. I have them somewhere. I know I do, but I just don't know where they are right now. So unfortunately, this is cart only. It is going to go into the collection, has been in the collection. It doesn't owe me anything now. Let's be honest. I didn't pay for this when I was a kid. It does still have the price on the back of it, actually. £19.97. I remember it was bought in Cardiff. I don't know what the store was called. This one, again, uh, this... Um, this was also from when I was a kid. And again, I do have, I actually have the manual for this up there, but I don't have the case for it. And I, I never did. I don't know where it came from. Those two will go into the collection. Uh, they don't owe me anything at this point, but uh, yeah, they will go uh, cart only for now. I do have other Mega Drive games in the attic. They're nothing special, but I will bring them down in the near future and I'll add them to the collection because they're games I've had since I was a kid. They don't owe me anything, so I might as well just incorporate them. And then back to the boot sale we go. Why not? I'm not one of these people who will dive into other people's boots. Yeah, sure, I may get more stuff if I'm rushing around and I'm diving in boots or whatever, but for me, it's more of a, a, a little bit of a day out and if I find video games, it's, it's a bonus. On this occasion, it paid off. So these people were putting stuff out on their stall about 20 minutes after everything had been set up. They were just taking their time. They weren't rushing. They put a little basket, I think, if memory serves, on the on the table and it had video games in it. And luckily I was there, right place, right time, and I got first dibs. Had a little look through what I wanted. How much? Pound each. Yes, please. Here are the games I got. So five games, two of which are well above the value of a pound. The other three maybe on value, touch more, but still going to keep them all because why not? Uh, first of which is going to be X-Men, the official game. Now, all these are complete with the manuals in very good condition as well. Uh, I think this is actually original Xbox case rather than the 360. I'm not a big Marvel guy, as you know, but games like this you know, like the Spider-Man games, the Batman games. I do kind of like them. They are a little bit of fun, so we'll be keeping that. I remember buying this when I worked for GameStation, going home and playing it with uh, with friends who worked for GameStation as well. We all bought the game the same day. Had a lot of fun with this one. Unreal Tournament 3. Uh, I hadn't really played much of Unreal Tournament until this game. Really fast-paced shooter and a lot of fun to be had. Again, complete. A lot of people will say this game is trash, and you may be right. I like it. Wheelman. Not an expensive game. Not highly acclaimed. A lot of people say bad things about it, I'm sure. But for what it was, I thought it was quite fun. Um, maybe I'll go back and play that and decide otherwise. But for now, anyway, I like it going into the collection. Now, the next two games pay for everything that I've got here individually. So they pay it for twice over. But we are going to keep them because they're games I would have added at some point anyway. This is Smackdown vs. Raw 2008. Not an exciting one for many. And I think in the US, this goes for a, a lot more than it does here for some reason. But I want all of the um, pre-2K wrestling games, like the THQ ones. I had more fun on those. I say I had more fun. I played it then. I didn't play it when 2K took over because I just lost interest in wrestling. This was probably one of the last ones. 2007 is one I want more with Triple H on the front, but I'm glad to be able to pick that up for a pound. The disc on this next one isn't quite as good, but it is still very playable and definitely trade worthy, although I will keep it. It is Tekken 6. I have bad, bad memories of this game. It was one of the most grueling achievements ever. I, I played it on like the hardest difficulty or something to get a certain achievement or a hard difficulty, maybe not the hardest, but it was difficult. And I got to the last guy and it took me around three days to beat him. It was, I was mind numbing. I was, the amount of expletives that I, that I uttered was ridiculous. Um, but I, I got it done uh, and there it is and we can add that to the collection. I think this is worth more than all of those other games. Pretty nice to be adding five Xbox 360 games for a pound each, so five pounds spent in total. Of course, updated figures on screen for you. We're also adding those two Switch games as well as an Xbox One controller and I've barely spent anything here. I also have a Funko Pop pickup to show you. Now, this was going to live downstairs, but I do have a lot of games related to this character on the Mega Drive, and I think there are maybe two more for me to pick up as well, so I might as well put it on the shelf. It is going to be Mickey. This is a Funko Pop out of box. I don't know how much this is going to owe me. I am going to allocate a pound to it because we bought a bundle of out of box Funkos off the same person 
combined postage and everything. That's going to go on the shelf actually next to some Mickey games just to sort of tie it in a little bit more. But I've got to be careful with things like that because the Mega Drive collection is about to explode. Stay tuned for the next episode for that. If you want to see another video from me though, you can click here. And until the next time, goodbye.